Well, hey guys, get excited because in this video, we're gonna be talking all about the skin benefits of alpha lipoic acid. Over the years, I've gotten a ton of requests. Please talk about alpha lipoic acid. What is the best dosage to take for anti-aging benefits? How does it work for maybe reducing wrinkles and fine lines? We're gonna cover all of that in this video. But before getting into it, comment below. Have you actually heard of alpha lipoic acid? There's a chance it's actually lurking in your skincare products and you are maybe not not even aware that it's there or that it's possibly even doing anything. But we're gonna talk about alpha lipoic acid, not only in skincare products, but in dietary supplements. Does this have any kind of skin benefit? Does it help ward off the signs of skin aging? Does it have a skin protective effect? Always looking out for those things to keep us looking younger and our skin healthy as long as possible. What the heck is alpha lipoic acid? It's also called thioctic acid, so you may see it labeled as that. This is something that is naturally present in our body. We make it, it's present in our cells in the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. Other animals make it and it's found in plants. What the heck does it do? Well, it is a key cofactor in a variety of metabolic processes necessary for the breakdown of like glucose as well as lipids, but it's also an antioxidant. Yes. Antioxidants are important for warding off oxidative stress upon exposure to things that generate free radicals, not only in our skin, but throughout our body, cause a lot of inflammation, damage protein, DNA, lipids in our cells that then make them have to be removed by our immune system. It's that cascade that leads to not only the skin signs of aging, but a variety of chronic health problems. I mentioned that alpha lipoic acid is naturally present in our body. It's something that we make, but we don't actually make enough of it to help us out. We rely on alpha lipoic acid from our diet and it's found in meat as well as a variety of vegetables and fruits. You can get it in one of my favorite vegetables. Comment below and if you know what that is. Broccoli, if you guess broccoli, you are correct. But you can also find it in spinach, another favorite of mine, tomato, potatoes, Brussels sprouts, peas, rice bran. In preparation for this video, I was thinking, man, I must be hitting my alpha lipoic acid goals because I eat all of those things. If you head on over to PubMed, you will find actually quite a few studies looking at alpha lipoic acid dietary supplements in the treatment and management of a variety of health problems. Diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, pregnancy outcomes, obesity, multiple sclerosis, and schizophrenia. Unfortunately, a real sticking point when it comes to supplements with alpha lipoic acid is that as an ingredient, it's actually not very bioavailable, meaning when you take it in as a supplement, it's really hard for your body to to absorb it. While it's great that we're getting it from our food, to what extent we're gonna absorb it well from a supplement, it really boils down to a lot of nitty gritty little details and how the supplement is formulated. And they're not required to demonstrate that their formulation is bioavailable or is absorbed to any appreciable extent. If you are interested in taking a supplement, of course, talk to your doctor first to make sure it's right for you. But when it comes down to choosing a brand for your supplements, I always suggest looking for supplements that are third-party tested. I always look out for like NSF certified for sport. What are the limitations of dietary supplements when it comes to alpha lipoic acid? It has a very short half-life, meaning it doesn't last in the body very long. And when we're talking about fighting off oxidative stress, it is estimated that upon exposure to like an environmental stressor, whether that be ultraviolet radiation from the sun, which you guys know is responsible for the majority of extrinsic skin aging by destroying collagen and through the generation of free radicals, it creates a lot of other damage in the skin. It's estimated that the generation of those free radicals, it kind of is at its maximum at 24 hours. So the timing of dosage is important. It's not the most stable ingredient and it's estimated that roughly only about 30% of a supplement of alpha lipoic acid is actually absorbed. It doesn't hold up too well in the stomach 
and it is very rapidly cleared from the body by the liver. Uh, your liver gets rid of it pretty quickly. Now, manufacturers have tinkered around with different formulations. They're different isomers of lipoic acid, and it's thought that maybe different combinations of them allow for the best absorption. Interestingly enough, adults over the age of 75 seem to absorb it better than younger adults. It's also thought that if you take the supplement on an empty stomach, you can get better absorption, but suffice it to say, the research on the optimal formulation is still in its infancy, and because it's a supplement, it's not standardized, so you're gonna get a lot of variation from brand to brand, and you're not gonna know as a consumer, nor can I tell you which ones are the best formulation. You're kind of left up to the manufacturer's marketing claims, but what about skin benefit? Why would this be helpful? Well, as you guys know, a majority of extrinsic skin aging comes from environmental exposures that generate free radicals in our skin that damage the DNA in our skin cells, as well as lipid membranes and proteins. Once the cells in our skin are damaged, from those free radicals, they have to be removed. Now your skin has its own system of antioxidants that are there to help control that. Unfortunately, they aren't good enough when you are exposed to mega insults like UV rays from the sun, tobacco smoke if you are a smoker, pollution, and visible light from the sun also causes, generates a lot of free radical oxidative stress in the skin. Antioxidants help neutralize those free radicals. They do so by donating, out of the kindness of their hearts, one of their electrons, and that helps neutralize that free radical. And so there's a lot of interest in applying antioxidants to the skin for a photoprotective effect. You see sunscreens, they help block or absorb UV rays, but they can't block or absorb 100% of UV rays. Some free radicals are still going to be generated. The idea behind topical or oral antioxidants is that they help to minimize some of that oxidative damage from exposure to environmental stressors. And of course, sunscreens don't block pollution, they don't block tobacco smoke, and some may protect from visible light, namely those that are tinted and have iron oxides. Um, all that to say there is a lot of obvious interest in both topical and oral antioxidants for photo protection. I have a video which I'll link down below on one of the more evidence-based dietary supplements that acts as an antioxidant to help reduce uh, the stress related to UV exposure. It's called Polypodium, sold under the brand name of HelioCare. Definitely check that out because it has been shown to be helpful for people who deal with photosensitive skin diseases, people who have melasma may benefit from the supplement. So definitely check that out. You know, another dietary antioxidant that has demonstrated benefit for reducing the burden of damage upon exposure to UV is actually uh, nicotinamide supplements. So that is another one. But what about alpha lipoic acid? Truthfully, there aren't any studies looking at dietary supplementation with alpha lipoic acid and its effects on sun damage, the generation of free radicals upon exposure to UV damage, mitigating UV mediated redness, nor are there any studies looking at supplementation with this antioxidant and improving the visible signs of skin aging long term. Where alpha lipoic acid rears its head as a dietary supplement in dermatology is actually not, it doesn't have anything to do with skin aging per se or fighting off free radicals from sun exposure, but rather in the treatment of an autoimmune skin disease, vitiligo. Vitiligo is an autoimmune skin disease where your immune system decides to attack the pigment producing cells in the skin and you get these white patches with no pigment and it can involve large swaths of your skin. While it's an autoimmune disease, there is growing research to suggest that a key driving force in the unfolding of vitiligo is actually oxidative stress. And there is good research showing that Dietary supplementation with antioxidant supplements for patients who have vitiligo can get them better responses to some of the therapeutics that we 
employ to treat vitiligo. One treatment for vitiligo is narrowband UVB. Patients who are treated with an oral uh, li alpha lipoic acid supplement or other antioxidant supplements have also been looked at likewise in this fashion. Anyways, they actually get better results from their narrowband UVB treatment than those who do not take the antioxidant supplements. So it's, you know, there's growing research to suggest a role for dietary antioxidant supplements in the treatment of vitiligo. What about actually applying it to the skin? Unbeknownst to me, I have been applying it to my skin off and on for many years because it's actually present in one of my favorite sunscreens, the Elta MD UV Physical Tinted Mineral Sunscreen. I love that bad boy. And honestly, that is a sunscreen I've been using off and on for many, many years. Anyways, what is the deal then with applying it to the skin? Animal models have been intriguing and shown promise. One study showed an improvement in wound healing after seven days with topical lipoic acid in an animal model. Another animal model study actually showed that topical lipoic acid helped to improve some of the smoking induced damage to the skin of animal models. Yeah, I'm always harping on protecting your skin from UV rays, but smoking really damages your skin in an equally if not more intense way. And when combined with UV exposure, it's like a double hitter. Anyways, so in animal models, topical application of alpha lipoic acid seem to actually improve some of the smoking induced changes. One study initially showed promise putting 5% topical lipoic acid on the skin of adults showed an improvement in fine lines around the eyes and the upper lip. But when researchers then in other studies went on to say, well, is this actually affecting meaningful change on a histologic, meaning skin biopsy level, to show true improvement or reduction in sun damage? And the answer is it really doesn't seem to make a difference. One study very nicely showed that applying lipoic acid to the skin, while well tolerated, did not result in any meaningful difference in UV mediated damage to the skin. It didn't have a photoprotective effect. They actually very nicely looked at uh, using 5% alpha lipoic acid to the skin. They also looked at a commercially available lipoic acid product by Paracone MD. The Paracone High Potency Classics Face Firming Serum, I didn't realize this, it's got lipoic acid in it. So they also looked at that, showed that there was no difference in photoprotection. You know, we know that the SkinCeuticals CE Ferulic can help mitigate some of the damage upon exposure to UV. That is, again, one of the more research-backed vitamin C serums out there. So this group actually took the CE Ferulic, showed that it, of, of course, you know, when used by itself, reduced the burden of damage from UV exposure, we'll just say. But then when they added lipoic acid to the CE Ferulic, the addition of lipoic acid did nothing, you know, didn't add anything to the outcome. It was the same. So it doesn't seem as though applying it to the skin really has much benefit. They postulate perhaps this is because either it's not stable, it degrades upon UV exposure, or it's just very rapidly cleared from the skin. It doesn't hang around long enough to affect meaningful change in terms of oxidative stress. As it stands now, the CE Ferulic from SkinCeuticals is well established to help reduce some of that oxidative stress upon exposure to UV. I know it's very expensive and there are a lot of dupes out there which you know aren't research back but you certainly could try those instead because they are less expensive. I reviewed many of them on here. However, getting away from vitamin C, I would not view lipoic acid as an alternative for a topical antioxidant. The research is just not there. Suffice it to say, applying it to the skin in strengths upwards of 5% appears to be very safe and well tolerated with minimal to no side effects, maybe some irritation, but really overall very well tolerated. In contrast to the more evidence-based topical antioxidant, the CE Ferulic, a lot of people do develop irritation with that. Uh, it's, overall, it's well tolerated to apply it to the skin. I've been using it unbeknownst to me in sunscreens for years. <laughs> uh, whether or not it's doing anything, the research would suggest it's not, but 
I tolerate it well. Overall, the studies where, where we're actually putting it on the skin and research trials, it appears to be well tolerated. Is it safe to ingest? Yes, it appears to be safe to take a dietary supplement that has alpha lipoic acid in it with the caveat that supplements are not regulated. And we don't really have good long-term safety data on alpha lipoic acid. The research that we have though does suggest that it is safe and uh, dosage is ranging from 300 to 600 milligrams is what is utilized in these studies that I mentioned at the beginning. Overall, it appears to be a well tolerated. Side effects are rare and include nausea, uh, gastrointestinal discomfort. And one person in one of the studies, uh, the schizophrenia study actually, did report skin irritation with alpha lipoic acid supplements. Now, we don't have any research on high dosages or the long-term ramifications of daily supplementation with this. So that's definitely something to consider. There is such a thing as too much of a good thing, especially when it comes to dietary antioxidants in supplement form. There is research to suggest, at least in the case of other dietary antioxidant supplements, namely vitamin E, that taking high doses actually increases the risk for certain cancers like lung cancer, as well as basal cell carcinoma of the skin. The safer all natural thing is to just make sure that you are eating a varied diet, including foods that have this compound in it to make sure that you are getting the dietary benefits of it. Whether or not you need to be taking a supplement, the research just really isn't there yet for the general population to say whether it's safe or not and the long-term ramifications of taking it, it could actually end up being harmful. Now, unless you have vitiligo and you're undergoing phototherapy, taking this supplement really isn't that research backed for having a skin anti-aging benefit. As far as applying it to the skin, seems to be harmless unless it causes you irritation, in which case, stay away from it. Uh, but whether or not it's actually getting in and having any appreciable effect on helping to mediate oxidative stress in the skin, like you would hope, seems unlikely, seems unlikely. So that being said, uh, it's important to, uh, to know about negative results. A lot of times, you know, both in the medical literature as well as, you know, of course in marketing, you're only gonna hear about positive effects, but it's important to know about negative results too, because, you know, a lot of brands will just put this in there, say, oh, our antioxidant enhanced formula, and you may, bucket antioxidants into one kind of thing and think, oh, I'm getting something extra in this product. They can charge you a lot more for it, but whether or not it's actually providing you any additional benefit beyond the product alone without that, which would be a lot less expensive, you know, seems like it's just something to keep in mind when you are going out there in the ocean of skincare products that you have to choose from. Likewise, when it comes to dietary supplements, don't just jump on whatever dietary supplement is being hyped up because we don't know the long-term safety ramifications of taking this every single day. A lot of dietary supplements add other things into the mix. And so we also don't know, I didn't mention this, but we also don't really have a good sense as to if there is any interaction with other medications. So definitely talk to your doctor before hopping on uh, alpha lipoic acid. I say that in air quotes, because that just seems to be the trendy thing to say now all the time, hop on this, hop on that. Anyways, uh, ranting about hop on aside, yeah, definitely talk to your doctor because there's always a potential for interaction with medications. For example, vitamin E supplements can interfere with uh, blood thinners and whatnot. So definitely always run by your supplement ideas with your doctor. Anyways, y'all, that's what I can tell you about alpha lipoic acid, a very underwhelming tale. I hope this was informative. Make sure you let me know in the comments if you've ever heard of it. Is this something that you have considered taking? On the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video on the skin benefits of melatonin. So definitely check that one out if you are you know, intrigued about antioxidants and their skin benefits. I dive more into the research on that one in that video, so check that one out. But if you like this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>